Okay, here we go. Let's continue our conversation on STP, Spanning Tree Protocol. What we talked about so far is the reason why we need uh, STP in the first place. That was done on our first video. Uh, we then, on our second video, talked about, uh, or we started talking about the election process, STP election process. The first step uh, that STP takes is find out or select, uh, rather, uh, who the what switch the root bridge is going to be. And we talk about, talk about that on our last video. The next step uh, will be uh, the root port selections on every other switch, but the root bridge, and we're going to talk about that now. The only thing, as you can see, uh, every other uh, video that we did, we started already with the network. I already opened the file and it was already running. Uh, this time, I'm going to go ahead and open it now, so you will see at the beginning that every single port on the switches are blocking or not forwarding data that is because STP is going through the convergence and uh, it's going to take approximately 30 seconds or uh, it's going to take actually 30 seconds for uh, STP to uh, converge uh, the reason it's going to do that only 30 seconds is because the ports are not um, they did not started at a blocking uh, state they just are turning on so it just need to go through the listening uh, state which is 15 seconds and then in the learning state uh, which is another 15 seconds and then it, it goes to forwarding um, uh, uh, and that is of course 30 seconds if the network was already up and running and we were to uh, for example uh, something was to happen to a link a link that is already running a port that was already b uh, blocking uh, to begin with will take wait uh, actually 20 seconds um, that is called the max uh, H timer uh, we will speak about all this in detail later on in different videos uh, it is going to be wait 20 seconds just in case that link that went down uh, comes back if it doesn't hear any PDUs uh, I'm sorry BPDUs from that uh, link it will determine that it is down and it will reconverge so that's 20 seconds waiting for the link to come up another 15 seconds in the listening state and another 15 seconds on the learning state state uh, uh, until it goes to uh, the the port is able to uh, forward uh, data um, again it doesn't take 50 seconds now only 30 because we start the network is starting up it doesn't ha have to go through the max H timer uh, 20 second uh, 20 second timer. So let me open that uh, file now. And we will see, as I said, that all the ports are not forwarding. There are no green ports, but the PCs, PCs don't count. I'm talking about the switches. So again, it's going to take 50 minutes in the listening state. Uh, we're going to talk about the, the states uh, later on, the, on, the, on different videos. And, and then another 15 seconds on the learning state. And then it will go into uh, the forwarding state. Uh, if the line needs to be forwarding, if it needs to be blocked, it will be blocked. We should be uh, reaching that point now. Any second now. Uh, there we go. Uh, that was about 30 seconds, or actually 30 seconds, and all the lights are running. Uh, are all the ports uh, that need to be up and running uh, and forwarding data, data, forwarding data uh, are doing so, and the ones that need to be blocked. Uh, such, uh, such as this, this two and this one right here are blocked. Okay, so um, like we said before, the root bridge is the first step, and it was already selected. Uh, we determined that uh, um, well, actually, we said that STP was going to select switch three as a root bridge, and we were correct on that one on our last video. We did not label it, so we're going to do that now. Our switch three is our root bridge. On an STP topo topology, every other switch but the root bridge will have a port that has the lowest cost pointing to the root bridge. That port on each uh, and every other switch but the root bridge is called a root port. And that is what we are going to do now, see how STP, uh, the L STP election process uh, goes about selecting the, the port. Um, the way it does that, if we see here, uh, we have a, a port cost table which I, uh, that I put up here in order for you to see. Uh, it depends on the speed, uh, on the link spe speed. Uh, I put up uh, two gigabytes links and the other ones are 100. If we look at the table, the cost for a 10 megabyte link is 100. The cost for a 100 megabits, not megabytes, I'm sorry, I keep saying megabytes. 
the uh, cost for 100 megabits uh, link is 19 1 gigabits is 4 and 10 gigabits bits it's 2 so let's start with this link over here this is a 100 megabyte there we go I did it again megabit link and that is has a cost of 19 so we're gonna go ahead and label that as a cost of 19 this is another 100 megabit link 19 as well this is another 100 megabit link as well 19 is the cost and this is the last 100 megabit link which is also 19 if we look at the table the one gigabyte um, the one gigabit uh, links are have a cost of 4 which we're gonna label now and this one is also a gigabit um, link and it also has a cost of 4 okay so um, like I mentioned before every other uh, switch by the root bridge will have uh, one single root port that's why I have here already prepared three labels because we have three switches so we know uh, there was going to be a root port selected here a root port selected here and another root port selected here one thing that you do need to remember is that if I say that this switch has three different paths to get to the root port I'm sorry the root bridge you will say well that's not correct because these links are blocked well they are blocked now that STP has converged already but when it starts that STP has not converged and it is going through the process remember that what we are talking about uh, right now root bridge, root ports, uh, designated ports that is all part of the uh, STP convergence process or election process so this has not happened just yet uh, uh, when the network starts so uh, in, uh, in fact uh, this switch will have three different paths to take to the root bridge after the root bridge has been selected uh, because STP like I said before has already converged then these two ports are blocked but because of the uh, we need to um, explain it uh, let's f uh, let's f um, uh, pretend that these two links are able to forward so in order to select the root port like I said, the root port is the root port, the root, uh, the port. I'm sorry, on each switch other than the root bridge, that has the lowest cost pointing to the root bridge. This will be the easiest to figure out because it has uh, only one. Uh, which this will be the easiest to figure out which one is the root port because it only has one port uh, for wind data at the moment. Again, remember that when it starts, when it's going through the convergence, all three are able to uh, forward, and STP needs to figure out which one has the less, the lowest cost. Uh, this has only a cost of 19 to get from this switch to switch 3 which is the root bridge if it goes this way it will have a cost of 4 and then a cost of 19 to go down again to root bridge that is 23 total if it goes this way it will have 4 plus another 19 to go down here and even more if it goes this way so the lowest cost port on this switch switch 4 will be this port right here which is fast ethernet 0 slash 1 that it has a cost of only 19. We're going to go ahead and label this port as a root port on switch 4. And I'm going to do it again on for switch 3. This time I'm going to be do it a little bit uh, slower and I'm going to uh, write it down as I go. Let's say for example that uh, switch 2 uh, tr try, is trying to figure out which one is the lowest cost path to the root bridge and it goes out of uh, let me see which one is this and it goes out of gigabyte 0 slash 2 it will have a cost of 4 let's write that down cost of 4 uh, to get to uh, switch 4 and then another 19 to get to uh, the root bridge 4 plus 19 that's 23 let's go ahead and take a look at the other uh, option which is this uh, link right here um, if it goes out of this way in order to get to the root bridge it has a cost of 19 and it doesn't have to we do, do not have to add anything else to it that is 19 and if it goes this way uh, it'll be 19 plus 19 that's a total of 38 19 plus 19 equal 38 as you can see the lowest cost to the root bridge is 19 which is this uh, port right here the port is fast ethernet 02 so we're gonna go ahead and 
label this port as a root port on fast ethernet switch i'm sorry fast ethernet zero slash two um if you think that you can do this if you understood what i'm trying to explain go ahead and pause the video see if you can figure it out if you can figure out uh, which one is the root port on switch uh, zero one uh, if you don't want to do it that's fine i'm going to go ahead and explain it anyway of course um, so let's go ahead and do that uh, obviously by looking at it the, the the shortest path to the root bridge will be this board right here which has cost only one uh, only 19 which is fast ethernet 02 fast ethernet 02 has a cost of 19 if it goes out this way it has a cost of 4 to switch 4 and then another and then um, another 19 uh, another cost of 19 uh, to get to uh, the root bridge and that will be a total of 23 if it goes out this board right here it will be I lost my pointer there we go if you go to, if it goes out of this board it will be 19 plus 4 plus 19 oh I'm sorry uh, it will be 19 and then it can go down this way um, so it will be 19 plus 19 19 plus 19 equal 38 so we have 19 23 and 38 obviously our root port is going to be our root port is going to be uh, fast ethernet 0 slash 2 okay so we have already come up with uh, what we think is going to be our root ports we're going to confirm that now by checking the settings on each switch remember that we do not need to do this on the root bridge because the root bridge does not have any root ports it already is a root bridge so it doesn't have to point or figure out which one is the last cost the lowest cost path to uh, the root bridge because it is the root bridge so let's check uh, switch number one switch one to see what is the uh, root port we said that it was gonna be this board which is fast ethernet 0 slash 2 let's see if that's correct show spanning tree fast ethernet 0 slash 2 and we are correct that is our root port let's go ahead and do the same for uh, switch 2 and we said that our root port was going to be also fast ethernet 0 slash 2 let's see if that is correct uh, show Spanning tree. Fast Ethernet zero less two is our root port. We are correct on that one as well. And the last port, the, the last switch is switch four, and which we said there was going to be. Oops. Uh, fast Ethernet zero slash one this time. Let's see if we were correct on that one as well. Show spanning tree. Fast Ethernet 0 slash 1, that slash 1 is our root port. So we are correct on all three. We label uh, before checking the uh, which ones we're going to be we're going to be selected as root port, and we definitely uh, were correct on that one. So I hope that this was clear. If it wasn't, please ask questions. If I made a mistake, please let me know. Remember that my goal doing this is uh, to check my understanding of uh, the topic. Uh, uh, that I'm dealing with at the moment that we're talking about at the moment like in this case STP uh, my second goal is to uh, learn um, more than what I already have learned and I think that is my most important goal uh, because the, the way I'm gonna be learning more is because of you guys uh, if you can uh, ask questions point out mistakes things like that I'm gonna appreciate that I'm gonna uh, take advantage of that uh, once again, thank you very much, and our next topic is going to be the process of uh, uh, designated port uh, selection. Again, thank you for watching.